Hello. Well, uh, today I kind of want to do something a bit different. Do something I haven't done in a while, which I've only done once before, where I talk about an actor I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, last time I talked about Peter O'Toole, whom I really love and admire his work. And I thought, you know, I've talked about this guy quite a lot. And uh, judging by the title, you know who it is. You know, um, I wanted to talk about my favorite actor of all time. The actor I think is the best of all time. I want to make clear that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but I genuinely believe that he is the best actor of all time. And that, of course, is Gary Oldman, whom I have praised quite a bit, whose films right here are just a collection of some of the films I have. Up there, I have a uh, one version of a Dark Knight trilogy. I have a couple versions of those films, so uh, yeah, I I just love Gary Oldman. Uh, he is fantastic in everything he's been in. Granted, not everything he's been in it has been incredible, but he always makes his part just fantastic, and I uh, I love the dude. He, I admire him. And watching interviews with him. Seems like an incredible guy. He sounds, seems really nice. Somebody who, if you met in person, you, you, you couldn't really say, probably wouldn't say anything bad about the guy. He just seems so nice. Um, which also helps my fondness of him. He seems like a great guy. Um, every film he's in, as I mentioned, he's incredible. And one thing is that makes him incredible is he's able to like transform himself, have makeup on him, and doesn't even look like himself. He's able to do accents and voices, so you know he doesn't sound like himself. And with those two things uh, uh, put together, it's like somebody completely different. Um, you know, Dracula. He goes through various changes in his looks and his accent the Transylvanian accent is so incredible that it's like this is the most probably authentic accent uh, of Dracula's there's ever been because he's from Transylvania many of the actors have been British so they do British accents and, uh, but you know Gary Oldman he 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 had his this accent he nailed it down, and that's not to say like Christopher Lee and you know and others who who were British that portrayed him that you know, they didn't do a bad job they did a great job. Bela Lugosi, who everyone thinks of when they hear the name Dracula, did a fantastic job. But I believe he uh, Oldman captured what Dracula was in the book and it's on the script and. He just captures Dracula so well that, in a lot of ways, what I think of him, outside of being able to go skating Christopher Lee. Um, <laughs> but again, those two are fantastic in the role also. Um, and when you look at the range Gary Oldman has, I mean, this is the kind of resume you'd want for an actor, to have as an actor, you know. Sid and Nancy, even though he wasn't that fond of it, but he was Sid Vicious, he went all out. He didn't, just like, well, I'm getting paid quite a bit and I'm getting my agent off my back of me doing a movie, so there you go. You know, while the script was disappointing to him, he, he and the director and everyone made it work, which I'm sure made the f making of the film a lot better for him. You know, he was Joel Orton in Prick Up Your Ears. Uh, JFK, he was Lee Harvey Oswald, and he looked and sounded like Oswald. He was Beethoven in Immortal Beloved. He's the corrupt DEA agent and um, the professional. He was a congressman in uh, The Contender. Uh, serious Black and Harry Potter, you know, Dracula count 
Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's Mason Verger and Hannibal, you know, the guy in the wheelchair. He looks so, I mean, they're disfigured. That was Gary Oldman. And, uh, you know, George Smiley and uh, Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy and uh, Winston Churchill and uh, Darkest Hour, those last two I mentioned, got him Academy Award nominations and he won for playing Winston Churchill. Though I believe he should have won for both as well as some others. And things. But I've mentioned that before, so I don't need to get into all that again. Um, and for the record, those two are, for me, George Smiley and Winston Churchill, are, in my opinion, are tied for his best performance. And that's really hard, because he's given so many incredible performances in so many films, ranging from fantastic and great and incredible to... Bleh. However, he's always been good. He's always been fantastic in all of them. Um, so, but... And it's not just because he got nominated for Oscars for those two films. It's just he really inhabited those characters. You know, with Winston Churchill, you know, he had to have a fat suit and uh, had the voice. I mean, he had to. He really had to capture Winston Churchill, particularly of the time period he was playing him in. Um, so, you know, that was quite something. Whereas George Smiley, yeah, there was a book, you know, that he can base on, but he, in a way, he could also sort of craft the character as his own. And there was also Alec Guinness that came before him, so, you know, you want to try and honor the character as well as not tarnish the legacy that, you know, as was established by Guinness. And I, did, I believe he did a fantastic job, so. Those two, in my opinion, are tied for his best performance, but my favorite performance is him in the Dark Knight trilogy as James Gordon, Commissioner Gordon. <clears throat> and people always talk about Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne Batman, Alfred Prennyworth, played by Michael Caine, you know, Heath Ledger as the Joker, Kelly Murphy's Scarecrow, Tom Hardy's Bane, Anne Hathaway's Selena Kyle, John Blake, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Morgan Freeman as, um, you know, uh, Lucius Fox gets talked about. And Gary Oldman does too, but the thing is, Gary Oldman doesn't get talked about as much because, as I've illustrated earlier, he transforms himself. And, you know, and not in the gains and loses weight sort of thing. He, with his face, his accent. He's always different. He always looks and sounds different. Even when he looks and sounds like himself, you're used to him sounding different and looking different. And with uh, James Gordon, he took in a character that's really established and really beloved. and really made it his own. He really, in my opinion, made the best definitive version of Gordon. And he set a bar that I think is quite high. Now, that's not to say other actors could never be good in the role. I think there are many actors who could play the part off incredibly well. But, in a lot of ways, I feel he's the heart of the story. Yes, it's Bruce Wayne's story in the Dark Knight trilogy, but he has to hold it together. He's the guy who works with Batman. You know, Batman's a vigilante, he's seen as such, and he has to do what he can to ensure the law works while having Batman do what Batman does, even though what Batman does is a, is in, in quite many ways outside of the law. So he gets results, and the two trust each other, and without Gordon, without an incredible actor playing Gordon, it might not have worked as well, so I believe Gary Oldman deserves so much uh, 
love in those films than he does already. You know, I'm not saying people don't love him as such in such a in that character or as that character, but he, you know he, he doesn't get mentioned as much. If if he does, like he's just great. You know, he's good. That's sort of the uh, thing thing that you hear quite a bit. It's because he's you know you know there's such an ensemble cast that while the lead there is a lead, you know, that's not Gary Oldman. So we're talking about a lead, everyone's gonna talk about Christian Bale. You know, say all these other actors like oh yeah, he's good. And one one in like one of the Batman films like you know. Oh, Morgan Freeman and Gary Oldman perform as expected. And it's like, what does that mean? Is he, are they good? Or are they not good? What's your thoughts on those actors? Most people would say they're great and they're fantastic. Uh, but it's like, it was like that sort of thing. Like, they perform as expected. Gary Oldman performs as expected of him. Whenever you see his name in a, for a film, it's as you would expect. Um, he's played various roles from villains to heroes, and he's so many times in between. But he's always great, he's always fantastic. And I could sit here and just continue talking, but you know, I don't want this to go on forever. But so I think I'll end it there. But that's just my thoughts on the best actor of all time, my favorite actor of all time. Uh, you know, again, uh, me saying he's the best is my opinion. You don't have to agree. But what do you think about Gary Oldman? Do you enjoy his work? Do you like him as an actor but wish maybe he chose some better parts? What do you think? Um, what's your favorite performance of his? You know, what do you think is his best? Because sometimes favorites and best can be quite different. You know, my favorite performance of his, as I said, was, was uh, Commissioner Gordon in the Dark Knight trilogy, but my favorite is a tie between uh, George Smiley from Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and Winston Churchill from Darkest Hour. Um, but, you know, perhaps best and favorite to you could be the exact same role. What do you think? Um, uh, you know, you can comment if you want or you don't have to. But anyway, uh, what, what do you think of, uh, of Gary Oldman overall? I, for one, obviously love his work. I enjoy his work. Um, but, yeah. I'm sort of repeating myself. Oh, well. I guess I was just so happy to do this. I'm now sort of at a loss as to how to end it. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I guess uh, I'll just end it here now. So, anyway... That's all I have for you to, uh, this week. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good weekend and a good week. And I'll see you all next time.